I think about my health and my physical situation a hundred times more than the average person does. I live my life minute by minute because of my anxiety. Right now I'm feeling anxiety. I can't get a deep enough breath as often as I want to. The light is hurting my eyes and I'm very lightheaded. I was seeing stars like when I walked in here because I'm so lightheaded. This is just something I feel every day. I've taken my blood pressure up to like 12 to 15 times a day on a really bad day. I check my blood sugar like three times in an hour. I use pH strips to check the pH levels of my blood. I want to know what's going on inside of my body. It's very disheartening when you go to people for help and they just shrug you off as like a crazy person. I feel there's an underlying issue that's causing my anxiety that has not been discovered. You talk about anxiety neurosis as though it's not a real disease, as though it's not a real thing, which is kind of an insult to me. <laughs> Sorry. Since I've devoted my entire life to the diagnosis and treatment of mental illness, there's not, to me, there's no stigma to having an anxiety disorder, to me it's the same as having a kidney disorder or a knee problem or arthritis. It's very real. If you have a problem with anxiety, it changes your body chemistry. I think I've acknowledged it. I just feel that I'm having an underlying cause for it. You know, I found this show really interesting and I, I, I found her to be a really good teaching tool because we are talking about the process of differential diagnosis and people absolutely have to understand that you don't want to become a patient as part of your identity. What you want to do is if you've got something wrong with you, okay, you have to deal with that, but don't let it become who you are, what you do, your social life, what you think about from the minute you wake up till you go to bed at night. You have to compartmentalize this and not let it dominate uh, all of your waking hours. And here, she's been to 35 doctors who are telling her, okay, look, you've got anxiety here. And she's thinking, no, 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 you're, you're, not, you're, you're not paying attention to me. I've got something wrong with my body. And she thinks they're telling her anxiety is just a, a deflection. They're not wanting to pay attention to what's going on with her. But the truth is, they'll never get to anything that might be going on if she doesn't get that under control because number one, doctors won't look past that. And number two, if she is in such a state of hyperventilation, if she's in such a state of adrenergic arousal, uh, if she's having panic attacks, which creates hypertension and all of that, they'd have no baseline. They never get a chance to figure out what's really going on. So currency for her is She'll work on this so they can then diagnose her properly. I, I, I don't think that there's a lot going on besides the anxiety. Uh, and I don't think the anxiety came out of the blue. She had a lot of events going on at the time that scared her. Okay, let's acknowledge those and deal with them without fear. For very understandable reasons, about a year ago during your pregnancy, finding out that you have a gene that makes you susceptible uh, to breast cancer, finding out that you have family members with cancer, uh, having a big physiological change during pregnancy, uh, kind of a lot of things conspire at, at one time. Uh, you, you do have a reaction at this time. We're gonna start by using non-medication and teach her to control these processes inside her body. Biofeedback is a powerful tool. You first learn to relax, then with biofeedback we learn to control certain bodily processes. Uh, we'll deal with this. She will do well.